hello students today we are going to discuss uh, the closure of a set of functional dependencies uh, and its application so let us discuss about the theory first then we'll see the uh, solution how to solve and after that we'll see the application so first uh, the theory we'll see uh, if there is a relation r which is associated with a set of functional dependencies if uh, the closure of this set of functional dependencies f is represented as the a plus which contains all the functional dependencies which can be derived from this original functional dependency f that means the a plus contains all the functional dependencies of the f and it also contains the functional dependencies which can be generated from the original functional dependency f by using the angstrom axioms right so let us try to understand uh, this by using the example then we will we will come back to the theory again so let there is a uh, relation containing the attributes like let a b c that there is a set of functional dependencies given as a to b and b to c so whenever i want to find out the closure of this functional dependency set f which is represent, represented as the a plus it contains the original functional dependencies that is a to b and b to c right so uh, if you remember in the angstrom axiom we have discussed one axiom called as reflexivity reflexivity means what if there is a set which is a subset of another bigger set b then we can say the b can derive the a right so similarly in our case can i get a r o a that means a determines a can i say yes i can say because a is a subset of a similarly b is a subset of b c is a subset of c right let us consider one one concept let i'll consider the ab can i say a is a subset of a ab can i say b is a subset of ab yes that means from ab what i can derive from ab i can derive a from ab i can derive b right so by using this concept let us try some more functional dependencies from ab i can derive a from ab i can derive b from ac i can derive c from ac i can derive the a from bc i can derive the b from bc i can derive the c right right students can i get ab out of ab yes i can get can i get ac out of ac yes i can get can i get bc i out of bc yes similarly from, uh, from three attributes i can get abc to a abc to b abc to c uh, i'm making more space by erasing this portion this explanation as and when required will also see yeah so from abc i can get ab from abc i can get ac from abc i can get bc similarly from abc i can get the abc right now students uh, if you see there is a function dependencies a r o b is there b r o c what you can derive from this please remember there is a function dependencies uh, we have discussed already that is transitive function dependencies if a r o a r o b is there and b r o c is there what i can derive i can derive the a r o c or i can get this function dependency right so by using that can i get a r o c yes i can get because a r o b is there and b r o c is there so i can get a r o c right so now students again check the axioms 
uh, there is a axiom called as union what that union tells for the same deter, uh, uh, determinant if the dip, uh, different deter, uh, uh, dependencies are derived then the dip, uh, different dependencies we can combine together that means let a arrow b is there a arrow c is there what i can derive from this i can say a determines b c this is called as your union right so let's apply the union again to the function dependencies here so a arrow a is there a arrow b is there can i get a arrow a b yes i can get uh, a arrow b is there a arrow c is there can i get a arrow b c yes i can get right so students a arrow a is there a arrow b c is there can i get a arrow a b c yes i can get right what else i can get let's try let me erase this portion again so now students uh, there is uh, a function dependencies a arrow a there is a function dependencies b arrow c what i can derive from this anyone I can compare I can compose the left hand side again I can compose the right hand side right that means from a B I can get the AC yes or no yes so I can get a B to AC okay uh, can I get a B to a students a B to a, a already we have discussed right yes we have discussed that can I get a B to C Yes, we can we can get because a b to a c means I can decompose the right hand side the dependent uh, dependent attribute side so I can get a b to c. Similarly, uh, let's check uh, uh, what I can get uh, out of this. Students, uh, can you get b r o b c? Can you get by using which rule? B to B is there, B to C is there. By using the composition, or you can say the union, I can get B to B C. Right? So many attributes I can generate. Many functional dependencies I can generate. The attributes I can combine, the different rules I can apply, and I'll get a set of functional dependencies. In this way, e even though I'm uh, my original functional dependency is containing two or three uh, two functional dependencies but the closure is containing many now uh, let's come back to the theory again so if you see the a plus contains all the functional dependencies which can be derived from the original functional dependency i think now it is clear to everyone now one one question let there is one relation r and there is uh, certain attributes that are available that there is a function uh, dependency state available can you say the a plus is pi or it is null pi it is null pi forget about the f also let me also remove the f let some attributes are there in the r can i say a plus is pi or it is not a pi yes since the attributes are there by using the reflexivity, I can get the functional dependencies, right? So this a plus is never pi. Please remember this type of analytical question. Okay, so a plus, a plus or the closure of the set of functional dependencies is never pi, never, never empty. It contains the, the functional dependencies. <coughs> so let's discuss about the application of it. Uh, this is another example. Uh, R is containing A, B, C. The functional dependencies are A to B, A to C. So you can you can solve and you can uh, try at your own. If you are having any issues, we can also discuss. This is another example you can try. The application of this uh, closure of functional dependencies uh, set is used to check whether two functional dependencies are equivalent or they are not equivalent 
even though the two original functional dependencies are different, whether they are equivalent or not, let us try to understand from my example. Let's there is one relation called as R containing A, B, C, D as attribute. Let uh, A is containing A to B, B to C, uh, C to D. Let B to D also. Uh, let I will have G as another functional dependent state that is containing A to B, B to C, A to C, C to D. So students, can I say my F is equal to G? You can see they are not same, right? So F is not equal to the G. But are they equivalent? How to check? For equivalency, I will find the A plus. I will find the G plus. So A plus, let us consider what is originally present. That is A to B, B to C, C to D, B to D. Similarly, G plus, what is originally present, let, let us skip. That is A to B, B to C, A to C, C to D. Students, if we compare the A plus and G plus, a to A arrow B is present in both sides, B arrow C, B arrow C is present in both sides, C arrow D is present in both the sides. Now, in A plus, I'm having a B arrow D. Can I get that B arrow D in the G plus? In A, I'm having the B arrow D, B determines the D. Can I get that in the G plus? In G plus, you check, we are having a function dependency B arrow C. And there is another function dependency C R O D. So what I can derive by using the transitivity? I can get the B R O D. That means B R O D I can generate in the G plus, right? Similarly, students, now check. In G plus, I'm having a function dependency A R O C. Let me erase this. So A R O C is there in the G, but can I get that in the A plus? Now let's check. A R O B is there and B R O C is there. Can I generate C out of A? Yes, I can get by using the transitivity. So by using the transitivity, I can get A R O C. Now you can see both the A plus and G plus, they are same, right? We can also add some more functional dependencies. Since now they are both, both are same, so we can say this A plus and G plus are equivalent, right? The A and G are not same, but their closures are same or their closures are equivalent, right? So this closure will help us to determine whether two set of function dependencies are equivalent or not. In this way, we can solve that very easily. So this is for uh, this uh, this is for today's class. Thank you.